Hi, my name is Fran. I'm going to be review reviewing your on-cue pump instructions with you about your nerve block. We use the nerve block to control your post-operative pain for a few days. So the important point of this is to make sure that you follow our instructions. We will be sending you home with written instructions as well so that you can follow through with them. You do not need to memorize what I am talking to you about. First of all, we will do this before you go into surgery. We will give you some sedation so that you are not aware of what we are doing and you won't feel any pain. While you are sedated, our anesthesiologist will use an ultrasound machine to find the bundle of nerves that will feed your knee and your foot after surgery. That bundle of nerves is usually located in your groin down towards your knee depending on which bundle of nerves we are gonna block. Once he has found that bundle of nerves with his ultrasound machine, he is going to use a needle to inject a heavy dose of a numbing medicine that will keep your leg numb for about 12 to 18 hours. That heavy dose will keep your leg heavily numb for that amount of time. However, when that wears off, we don't want you to be without any pain control. So while he's in doing the main injection, he's going to insert this little tiny catheter up under your skin. It's very flexible. He will leave that along the same bundle of nerves he has found that will use, be used to numb your leg up. He will secure it in place with some clear tape and then it will be attached to this ball. This ball has more of the same numbing medicine in it. When it is turned on, however, it will not keep you as numb as you were the first day. So the subsequent days, you may not be as numb, but you should be comfortably numb. Now, since it will wear off in 12 to 18 hours, that could be in the middle of the night or the next morning. And since we are not sure when that is gonna be, we're gonna have you turn it on probably the evening of your surgery. As far as the specific time and rate for which you will be turning it on, you will refer to your instructions that we're going to give you, and that will be specific to your surgery and will be decided by your anesthesiologist. When you do turn on this pump, you're simply going to open the dial cover and turn it on to the rate we have suggested that you turn it on to. Make sure that you hear a clicking noise as you turn from from number to number. That will assure that you've got it in position and that it is running. If you don't hear a click, you could be between the numbers and you may not be getting the medicine infused. Once you've turned it on to the pump rate we have suggested you turn it on to, if you are comfortable, you don't need to do anything else to it until it's time to remove it. If, however, you are uncomfortable at any amount of time, refer to our instructions again. It will tell you the rate in which to choose to increase it or decrease it. It also will give you our anesthesiologist's phone number so that you can call him. If you are uncomfortable, the important part is to notify the anesthesiologist so that we can make sure you are comfortable while the pump is in. Depending on the rate we have decided that it is gonna be run at, you will last with this pump about three to four days. When it is empty, it will look like an apple core. It will be sucked down on itself. It will look like a hard apple core. You may also have some returning of your feeling in your lower leg because it has run out. So if you're starting to feel a pins and needles kind of sensation, it means it probably is running out. At that time, you can remove the catheter. Since it is only secured with tape, you don't need to worry about sutures. You would simply remove the clear plastic tape and then pull the catheter out along the skin plane. You don't want to pull it out perpendicular to the skin plane. Just pull it straight out. Each catheter has a blue tip on the end, so if you're afraid that you didn't get it all out, you should notice a blue tip on the end. It does take some firm, steady pressure to pull it out, so don't be alarmed if you have to apply some pressure to remove it. The bag will be attached to your waist usually when we send you home. So this ball will be inside the pouch. The pouch will be around your waist. That way you can control it from swinging when you're using your crutches. We don't want it swinging around around your arm or your crutches. So wear it around your waist or through your belt loops. The important thing with having a numb leg is you need to protect it. You won't know if you've injured it if it's numb. So at all times, make sure you rely strictly on your crutches for weight support. Don't try to bear weight on your leg. Also, if you will keep the foot and leg in front of you while you're walking on your crutches or sitting. You will know where they are in position to you, so you will know that you have not hit it against something, you have not dragged your toe along behind you. So try to keep your foot in, vis in your own visibility so that you know where your foot is and you know you have not injured yourself in the amount of time while this is working. Please don't try and bear any weight on it until you have full sensation back and your surgeon has said it's okay for you to put weight on it. If you have any questions at any time, you can always refer to our discharge instructions, and also you will have our anesthesiologist phone number on those same pieces of paper. So if you have any questions or any problems or any concerns about your pain control, 
please contact the anesthesiologist. Thank you. Call your doctor right away if you experience redness or tenderness at the catheter site, or if you have ringing in your ears or a metallic taste in your mouth, as these could be rare signs of infection or toxicity, respectively. Thank you.